I'll show you quickly how groups work in Affinity Photo. Groups are primarily used for organizational purposes, making the layer stack tidier and more compact. But you can also apply adjustments and masks to groups, so they serve a practical purpose as well for non-destructively altering multiple layers simultaneously. I'll start with a basic example. When you only have one layer selected, using Command G on Mac or Control G on Windows will create an empty group above that layer. You can then begin dragging content into that group by offering layers to the text or label area. You'll see the group thumbnail change to represent the content that is now contained within it. If you prefer, you can access the panel options here and uncheck Show Group Thumbnails, and this will instead display a folder icon. I'll double click on the faint group text and rename this group to Clouds 2. Now, down here, I will make a selection of multiple layers by selecting Cloud 14, then holding Shift and selecting Cloud 2. With these three layers selected, if I now use Command G on Mac or Control G on Windows again, it will create a group and automatically place these layers inside it. I'll rename this group to Clouds 1. To release items from a group, I could expand it and drag them out separately. This is fine for single layers, but can be time consuming for multiple layers. To remove a group entirely and release all layers from it, I can instead right click on the group and choose Ungroup. Or the shortcut for this would be Shift Command G on Mac, Shift Control G on Windows. You will also find these options on the top Arrange menu. This is useful to know if you are recording macros, since they can only record explicit operations and not click drag operations directly on the Layers panel. As I mentioned previously, using groups is great for organizational purposes, but they can also be useful practically as well. For example, I already have three groups here for each island cutout in my composition. I may want to adjust them tonally all at the same time. Now I could add an adjustment layer above the top island one group, but this would also affect all of the layers underneath, such as the cloud and background layers. What I can do instead is select the three island groups, then group them together and call this new parent group Islands. I can double check exactly what this group contains by soloing it. To do this, I can hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows and click on its thumbnail. So this group just contains the island detail, which is exactly what I am after. Having confirmed this, I can once again hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows and click on the thumbnail to exit solo mode. Now I'll add an HSL adjustment with Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. To make sure this only affects the group content, I can click drag and offer it to the thumbnail of the group, then release the mouse button. On the dialog, I'll switch to reds and increase both saturation and luminosity shift sliders. Then I'll switch to yellows and just increase luminosity shift, then close the dialog. Now I could also click drag and offer this adjustment layer to the text or label of the group. If I do so, notice there is a small shift in the layer stack. There is no longer a small dividing line between the island groups and the HSL shift adjustment. If I offer to the thumbnail. This adjustment will then always render above anything else that is a child layer of this group. If I offer to the text instead, this adjustment is like any other child layer in the stack, and if a layer sits above it, it will no longer be affected by it. For example, if I drag Island 1 above the HSL shift adjustment layer, Notice it now renders differently to the other two islands. If I drag the HSL shift adjustment and offer it to the thumbnail, 
it will always be at the top and affect all layers, regardless of their positioning. Knowing this difference in behavior is incredibly useful when it comes to more advanced compositing workflows. So there we go. That was a quick look at how groups work in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.